Good morning. This is um, Senate Judiciary and Senate Health and Welfare meeting on S3. Um, we're joined this morning um, by Katie McKinn and Eric Fitzpatrick from Legislative Council, as well as Morning Fox, the Deputy Commissioner of the Department of Mental Health, um, and Nolan Langwell, who is the uh, member of Joint Fiscal, if there's any questions about the appropriations that the House added. If you remember, as the bill passed the Senate um, Committee on Judiciary, there was 500000 in appropriations. It went to the Appropriations Committee. They took the 500000 out. And I believe no one can correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe the additional 30000 is to the Department of Mental Health to help with the study that's in the bill. Um, no one, do you want to comment on that briefly or no, I, um, I, for the record, Nolan Langwell, the Joint Fiscal Office, yeah, it's 25000 to support the work on Forensic Care Working Group, and then 5000 for per diems, so it's 30000 oh, per diems. No, yes, right. we go to GMA. <clears throat> so, um, correct. Anyhow, the Senator, um, so Senator Lyons and I have looked at the bill along with uh, Eric and Katie and others, Senator Baruth and uh, the Department of Mental Health. We um, thank the House of Representatives for their hard work on this bill, as well as the improvements to the bill in sections one through five. Um, it is only in section six where we have great concern Eric could go briefly over the changes in sections one through five if he want, if he doesn't mind. Um, just so you're aware of what what we would be agreeing to. And no, I'd be happy to. Thank you, Senator Sears. Sorry, I Senator, Senator Nick Sears. has a question. Um, I'm just wondering, can you put it on the screen, please? Or does that not work with this larger group? Actually, I don't know that that would be helpful. Um, okay. It, are, because what version are we using? 1.1? 1. 1? Uh, yes. The uh, <clears throat> as far as the documents that, that you have on your committee page, uh, the probably best one to look at is the one under my name, S3 House Proposal of Amendment. It is version 1.1, 1. 1, though, Senator Nika. Although you. it's yeah. But uh, as Senator Sears mentioned, the, the changes to sections one through five are really pretty straightforward. And I can zip through those pretty quickly. The, uh, the House added, you remember in the, in the Senate bill that the, uh, had a lot to do with the examinations that take place when a criminal defendant raises the, either the insanity defense or the issue of the, the defendant's competency to stand trial. Uh, is raised during during the proceedings, and the uh, Department of Mental Health was added in, on a number of occasions, uh, both to receive notice about or receive a copy of the initial psychiatric report when it's uh, when it's ordered by the court, as well as to have party status in that commitment hearing and to uh, be able to appear at the hearing and call witnesses. One addition that the House made uh, is to add not only the Department of Mental Health but the Department of Aging and Independent Living when applicable. And the reason for that, it actually makes sense legally, is because there's a separate statute that requires that when the, when the defendant's uh, insanity or competency is at issue because of a developmental disability, as opposed to because of a mental illness, then it's uh, Dale that uh, would be the, the State Department where the person could be committed if ultimately they're found to be a danger. It wouldn't be DMH uh, in those particular class of cases, the person would go to Dale. So it makes some sense for Dale to uh, be added uh, to, the, to the list of folks who would get a copy of the report, as well as to provide them with party status at the hearing if it's developmental disability is, is, the, is the condition that's at issue in the particular case. So that's one of the, and that's done a number of times in those first several sections. Another addition that was made has to do with, um, you may recall, the idea that competency and sanity being two different things, the Senate bill had a provision that required the, uh, the 
reports, if, if it was a, a situation where both competency and sanity are at issue, the reports have to be done separately and presented separately to the court. The, uh, the House added a provision based on actually on American Bar Association model language that permits the defendant uh, to request that the reports be done concurrently. So the general rule would be the reports are done separately, but you provide the defendant with the option and the defendant might choose to say, well, I'd rather have the reports done at the same time. So that option is added. And another uh, concept that's added to that uh, that sort of joint report issue is that if the reports are done separately, then there was a concern on the House side about, well, you know, it could be that that uh, a report on sanity might be done first, or sorry, a report on competency uh, might be done first. But you remember that there, that because a person is then is, is found incompetent, they could be treated potentially for years. They may never regain competency, and uh, there may never be a trial. They have folks who are who are uh, subject to the uh, commitment of DMH right now, who were committed a long time ago because they've never regained competency. So they added a provision that said, okay, if if the reports are done separately, then the psychologist or the psychiatrist who conducts them has to make sort of reasonable efforts to, to uh, gather and save any evidence that might later on be used in the, in the competency, sorry, in the sanity proceeding, if the person regains competency. Um, those are some of the main changes in the first couple sections. They did not change the section, you may recall, that permits this, the, that was requested by the Attorney General's office, the request that the uh, prosecution be able to obtain a independent psychiatric report of the defendant uh, in, a, in a competency case the same way they currently can in a, in a sanity case. Uh, and they added some provisions to the uh, evaluation. I think, uh, Katie, I might ask you for a moment to help on this. This is section five. They added some pieces to section five, which was the, I think the evaluation, not a study, but similar to a study of uh, the DMH and some other players are gonna conduct a, uh, the mental health uh, services that are provided to defendants under the contract that the Department of Corrections has. I think they added a few pieces to that. Um, but uh, uh, I think those are the, the highlights that I can recall at this point. Katie, um, we're not hearing you. No, we cannot hear you, unfortunately. All right, so I could just add here, I pulled up the, the little summary I did. So the little piece, the yep. pieces that they added to section five, which is the, uh, the uh, inventory and evaluation of mental health services provided by the, the entity that DOC contracts with for healthcare services, they added some pieces uh, requiring the evaluation to compare the type, frequency, and timeliness of mental health services, how they differ uh, among Vermont correctional settings, an assessment as to how the use of a for-profit entity with whom the DOC contracts for healthcare services affects cost of poor quality of care in correctional settings. Uh, they have to assess whether DMH should provide oversight authority for mental health services provided by this entity with whom DOC contracts and a requirement that some information be provided as to how the MOU between DOC and mental health uh, impacts mental health services provided uh, within DOC. Uh, and they also added some language, which you'll see in a couple of places in the bill, requiring that when the evaluation is conducted, it has to ensure that social and racial equity issues are considered, including issues related to transgender and gender nonconforming persons. Uh, and I think, oh, one last piece I, I would add, that I know this is because this is relevant to the Forensic Care Working Group and the Remember another major part of this bill was the victim notification piece. This idea that when a, when a, uh, someone who's been committed to DMH custody, when their status changes and they are released into the community that, that, that notice is provided to the attorney general's office and the state's attorney and that that notice then is passed along to the victim. The Senate bill had a separate notice piece, separate from that, which also required when a person is already, a defendant is already in the community on an ONH, an order of non-hospitalization, 
that when that person isn't complying with the order or in some other way the treatment isn't working, that notice is provided to the state's attorney and the AG in that situation as well. See, so that's a different type of notice, different circumstance. The Senate version also had that uh, because I think there was discussion even at the time as to uh, the how that a provision like that would work. So the Senate also had it in the forensic care working group. So what the House did was they struck it from the statute. So the notice wouldn't be required in that situation, but the working group would still look at it. And there's a separate reporting date on that that I, th I think is um, perhaps February. Is that right, Katie? That th I think that's right. So yeah, so there, that would be folded into the report and then they would, they have, the legislature would have an opportunity to, to look at it again next year. Any questions on those sections that we would be accepting? Um, any comments from anyone who's here? Um, Deputy Commissioner? Um, hey, the department's okay with these sections? So why don't we go to where um, Senator Lyons, myself, and others met to try to, um, the, the study was quite um, big um, and took in more things than competency um, that the House put together. And so the, we, we sent out a, a proposed concur with further proposal amendment. We wanted to check and make sure it was okay with all of the committees as well as the Department of Mental Health, which is gonna be involved in a lot of the study. So um, I will tell you ahead of time, Senator Lyons, myself, Senator Ruth, uh, Deputy Commissioner Morning Fox, and uh, Eric and Katie met to kind of develop this, but we are not, you know, if, if you folks think there should be changes, feel, feel free even though this is on the um, calendar for this morning. So do you want to go over it, uh, Katie? Or uh, Do you have voice now? I hope so. Can you hear me? Oh, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> this is great. Thank you. Oh, Yeah, uh, my first Zoom call of the morning. Sometimes yeah. I don't have audio. So, technical <laughs> difficulties. So, Hit us all. <laughs> um, so I have a side-by-side -side summary. I was thinking I would pull yeah. that up and that might be the easiest way to compare the yeah. documents. Okay, yep. let me go ahead and do that. Are you seeing a chart? Not yet. There yeah. we go. You see Perfect. it? Okay, great. Um, so the column I'm going, um, just to kind of ground you in where we are, this is section six. The very last row is the section seven that the house added. But I've broken um, section six up by different categories to kind of show you how the Senate version and the House version compare. So right now I'm going to be walking you through the changes that were made in the House version. So that's this middle column right here. So first was um, the working group. And as you remember, section six required DMH to convene a working group. The Senate version had by August 1st of 2021, and the House version had that the group would be convened by seven, um, so July 15th, 2021. And the House version added members um, to, the, to the membership of this group. You'll see in, in this box, this is um, the list of members that the Senate had. The House added to that a representative of Dale, the Chief Superior Judge, a representative appointed by the Vermont Medical um, Systems, um, representative appointed by the Vermont Developmental Disabilities Council, three crime victim representatives, whereas the Senate version had two. Similarly, uh, three individuals with lived experience of mental illness versus one in the Senate version. And the House added language that at least one of these individuals would have lived experience of the criminal justice or civil commitment systems or both. And, this, these individuals would be appointed by Vermont psychiatric survivors. And then the House version deletes um, a representative of BGS. So that is the only member that the House version removed from the working group. So next we move into this. Um, our, our proposal of amendment would, would bring back, would agree with the House on all the members, but add the back in the BGS. We feel if you're gonna build a facility, 
you ought to at least be able to hear from BGS and as you're involved in that discussion. Thank you. And so you'll see this last column here um, is the, the Senate concurrence with further proposal of amendment that's on this um, Senate calendar today. And you'll have that the Senate proposal adds that um, BGS representative back in. So the next row is um, really the main focus of this working group as it left the Senate was examining the overlap in the mental health and criminal justice systems. And there was a report that was due by November 1st of this year, and it was um, kind of looking at these specific um, items. And then um, the House version um, kind of changed the structure of how this report was to come back. So whereas the Senate was asking for a one-time report back, the Senate version created kind of a tiered process um, where there were um, two preliminary reports um, and the second preliminary report built on the findings of the first preliminary report. And then there would be a final report that would kind of fine tune um, the recommendations made in the first two preliminary reports. So under the House version, the first preliminary report is due January 15th of 2022. The final report is due September 15th of 2022. Um, and then I've, and I've highlighted um, each of the items in this report where the House has added or, or kind of uh, changed the specific items to be reviewed by this group. Um, so first were any gaps in the current mental health and criminal justice structure. Um, next were opportunities to improve public safety and address treatment needs of individuals in the criminal justice system. The House added in consideration for victim rights and forensic care process. Next um, was competency restoration models in other states. That language came from the Senate. The House added, including models that do not rely on involuntary medication and how cases where competency is not restored are addressed. Um, the next item is models used in other states to assess public safety risks, including guilty but mentally ill verdicts in criminal cases. That was not changed by the House. The House did add due process requirements for defendants held without adjudication of a crime, processes regarding other mental health conditions affecting competence or sanity. Um, and then the House um, listed, well, the Senate listed models for forensic treatment and the House added to that, including inpatient, community-based or other treatment models. <coughs> and then the House added any additional recommendations to address the gaps in the systems. So to come back up to kind of point out the differences in the House version and what the Senate is proposing. Um, the Senate is proposing only one preliminary report versus the, the two preliminary report structure that is in the House version. And whereas the House preliminary report is meant to provide recommendations that the final report builds on, um, the Senate version specifies that the preliminary report is for the purpose of kind of giving a status update um, on the work prior to receiving the final product. Um, so both of the, both the House's first preliminary report and the Senate's only preliminary report would come in on the same day. Um, the, there's a difference in the date of the final reports. So whereas the House would be September 15th of 22, the Senate version that's on the calendar today would be August 1st of 2022. And um, the proposal on the calendar today adjusts some of the um, items that the working group and DMH are going to be looking at. So whereas an earlier version had only any gaps in the current mental health and criminal justice system structure, um, the version on the calendar today um, kind of tightens up that language by saying related to individuals incompetent to stand trial or who are adjudicated not guilty by reason of insanity. So it, it narrows the scope a bit. Um, the next item, opportunities to improve public safety, that um, was accepted the same version as the House is in the Senate version on the calendar. The next item is competency restoration models. This language was deleted from this particular report. However, it's not gone altogether. Instead, the, the request to look at competency restoration models is moved into a separate report later in this section 
that will be due at a different date, at a later date. Um, so it, it's not gone, but it is um, separated and will be addressed separately at a, at a later date. Um, the next item was models used in other states to assess public safety risk. That is the same as the house version. Uh, also the same is looking at due process requirements for defendants and um, processes regarding other mental conditions affecting competence and sanity. Um, both those are the same as the house version. What is not the same is um, language around models for forensic treatment. This uh, house version, um, this is part of kind of the tiered decision-making. Um, the second preliminary report would have asked that the house um, proposed would have asked if a forensic treatment model is needed. And then if it was determined that a forensic um, treatment facility was needed, then that would be addressed in the final report. So this uh, proposal in the Senate kind of backs away from that um, threshold question and instead asks for models for forensic treatment, including the size, scope, and fiscal impact of a forensic treatment facility. And then um, with regard to any additional recommendations, the Senate version just, just limits the language to that phrase, any additional recommendations, and doesn't have this language about um, addressing the gaps in the current mental health and criminal justice structures. Um, so those are the changes to that study. Um, and as you'll see, this is related, the forensic treatment facility. Um, this is treated as part of the same report above. As I noted before, the House treats this as part of, as a threshold question in the second preliminary report. The Senate version on the calendar today removes that second preliminary report and, and asks for information about the forensic treatment mm -hmm. facility right up front um, as part of the report that we just went over. Can I just, and if, uh, I, Senator Lyons and I, and I think mental health agrees that the most important thing is as we're making decisions about a new mental health facility, we should also be aware of this forensic issue. <clears throat> and to leave that down the road would make um, any plan we have for a new facility. Um, and that's the reason for trying to do this separately. Agreed. Okay. So the next piece, um, the version that you sent over, and, and Eric already touched upon this, was um, requesting a study um, on the, the component about the notice to the prosecutor with regard to non-compliance or inadequacy of an order of non-hospitalization. That was part of the Senate's original proposal, and that was coming in on November 1st of 2021. Um, the House, um, for the most part, kept this language. It just made an adjusted change to reflect the fact that it's no longer required in an earlier section of the bill, but this is assessing the necessity of notification to the prosecutor. And the House did change um, the due date to <clears throat> February 1st, 2022. So they allowed for three extra months for this um, particular report to come in. And you'll see that the version in the Senate calendar today is the same as the House's version. So next is the competency restoration model piece. And again, um, this is the language. Um, I've created a new subsection when I put together the amendment. It's a new subsection D. And basically I've taken language from the earlier study and bumped it down to its own standalone um, section. And this has a, a later due date. So now this analysis by DMH would be due on January 15th of 2023. Um, they're to submit a report to the General Assembly comparing competency restoration models and addressing how cases where competency is not restored are handled. Um, next, the House version um, added some guiding principles to the work that's being done by this group. So the working group is to ensure that social and racial equity issues are considered, including issues related to transgender and gender nonconforming persons, and also consistency with the General Assembly's policy to work towards a mental health system that does not require coercion or the use of involuntary medication. 
Um, and the Senate version um, adopts this same language. Um, there's a technical correction to reflect the fact that there's a new subsection D, but aside from that, the, the um, language is the same. Uh, next, experts. The House added language that DMH was to um, access regional or national expertise to present models um, to the working group to review, including a model um, recommended by the working group. And this language calendar today is the same as the House version. Um, similarly, draft legislation. Um, the ONH report, the, the prosecutor notification report, and the final report on mental health and criminal justice system overlap um, are to be, are to include proposed draft legislation. And that language is the same in the Senate version on the calendar today, again, with a technical change to include the new subsection D. And lastly, um, section seven. So the House version adds a new section of the bill um, to adjust the membership of the Joint Legislative Justice Oversight Committee. Um, and they added two members of that committee, one member of ho the House Committee on Human Services and one Senator at large. And the proposal on the calendar today deletes this section in its entirety, meaning that the current structure of the committee would be, um, would be preserved as it is. I think it's House <clears throat> Health Care, is it Katie? Not oh, right. yes, yeah, I'm yeah. sorry. Okay. Did yeah. I say Senate Not Health Care? Okay, thank you. <laughs> uh, House Health Care, yes. I'll pull this down so you can see each other. Any comments from anybody? I'm fine. <laughs> Seems reasonable to me. The department supports this? Uh, for the record, Deputy Commissioner Morning Fox, uh, D Department of Mental Health. Uh, yeah, I think in general concept, uh, overall, we're in support of this. I think that uh, in uh, one of the sections where we're talking about uh, the uh, models for forensic treatment, uh, and I know that uh, the <coughs> most recent amendment uh, took out language uh, it, around including inpatient community-based or other treatment models, uh, and that the language in the, in the most recent amendment um, really kind of goes models for forensic treatment, including the size, scope, and, and physical impact. And I think even a, as a part of that, it, it's not lost on, on myself or the department that we would be looking at not only that, but part of all of this study is to look at different various treatment models. We're not, the states won't rely just on a facility, uh, you know, is it my position or, or not that, that, I, as I've testified before, for a need for a facility, um, I, I yes, uh, but that doesn't mean that there's other places that that treatment won't be provided. And so, you know, I think that you know, for us as a part of all of the study, that's going to be a part of this as well. Uh, just, I just want to make sure people are clear. I'm not asking for other language necessarily, but I just want to just to put out that you know, I want people to be aware that we would be looking at uh, you know the different types of models and, and treatment models. Uh, because there are, are going to be people placed on orders of non-hospitalization out in the community uh, and, and things of that sort. So we do, we do need and we will be looking at other treatment models. Uh, but yes, I think you know, the moving forward with this language is, you know, is, is workable for us. Well, it certainly relies on the, the um, department to do the work that the department understands. So without prescribing specific areas for work. So that I think that was the reason that we talked about changing that language. You know, and I appreciate that Senator Lyons and that's that's really the, the perspective I'm coming from as well. So thank you. I think one of the, you know, it's important to remember the genesis of this bill really was um, discussions with state attorneys, the Department of Mental Health and others, and then Senator Clarkson, Senator Wyatt, Senator White, and myself introduced the bill two years ago, and it passed the Senate and died in the House, um, and we resurrected it as, as S3. I think it's, you know, it's a 
bears repeating that this is a small group of people, but this small group of people uh, has a and the ability to terrorize certain communities in our state, and particularly for family members and others, and also um, for themselves and the danger to themselves as well. So this is a long time coming, and I hope that the House will accept these changes. I don't have any guarantee that they will, but I think um, we owe it to ourselves to make sure that um, the study is realistic and something that can we can move forward with. And the other language, obviously, is the, the community notification and other parts of this bill. And I might say the funding, too, is helpful because I think the department needs that funding, and but I also believe legal aid needs that uh, to be able to hire um, and get expert opinion. If everybody's okay, we won't hold you. I know we have time to get to the floor and <clears throat> put ties on and jackets on for some of us and whatever else. Okay. Any Are other? we on at 10? We're on the floor at 10, yeah. Dick, can you just stick around when we go off YouTube for a minute? Sure. Please? Sure.